morning. Good morning. Good morning. Look, I, I had to drive here from Guelph, <laughs> and uh, I, uh, I have to say, I hope that 407 extension gets in here pretty soon. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, uh, thank you very much for inviting me here today. I uh, uh, certainly see me as a, a big commitment uh, here to the success of the Durham region largely because of a great number of our members are located in Durham and uh, are we're in business to help them succeed in business. And I think everybody realizes today that no single company can be successful on its own. This is a, a time when supply chains are competing around the world and the success of any company is going to depend on the success of their customers, the success of their suppliers, and primarily the success of the communities in which they're, they're located. So today's discussions, I think, are, uh, are very apt, uh, very important in uh, the context of all of the change that is affecting the world economy, uh, Canadian economy here in Ontario, uh, and the Durham region. But it's also very, very important because we're talking about not just the success of businesses, but we're talking about jobs, we're talking about prosperity of every citizen of this community. And I can tell you, this isn't a win-lose proposition. This is, we have to look at economic growth, the economic opportunities today as win-win. So if Durham is successful, I can guarantee you that Ontario will be successful. And the so I, I'm very pleased to be here to, to set a bit of the context. I think my, uh, my clicker's up here uh, somewhere, but let me start off with, with a couple of thoughts. Uh, first of all, much has changed since the last Economic Prosperity Conference that we had two years ago. We've gone through the deepest financial meltdown uh, and one of the most severe industrial recessions since the 1930s. And maybe if there's a lesson to be learned from that, it's that you don't create wealth in an economy simply by spinning other people's debt around and around and around again. You create wealth by producing goods and services that customers value and that they want to buy. And that's why, that's what business is really all about, creating, creating that value. And a good deal of the, of the risk today in the economy and in financial markets comes from the fact that I think our financial markets number one, don't reflect the risk and don't reflect the value that is being created by businesses on Main Street, businesses on, um, uh, in, in, uh, in manufacturing and other industries and services industries as well. And that's a, that's a risk. But clearly the fundamental thing here is how do you create wealth in an economy that's fundamentally changed? And I, I'm going to be here to set uh, some of the context of that. Uh, uh, of those changes. i got to compliment everybody for getting up so early to hear an economist and, uh, uh, speak at this, particularly at this time in the morning. And, uh, and you'll not only get a good dose from me, but uh, I know Derek Holt's going to be here later on too. So, so two economists first, uh, first thing in the morning. I'm, that's, uh, that uh, is well worth the drive from Guelph, i got to tell you. <laughs> Yeah, the other thing that, uh, that I wanted to say, though, is that, you know, I, you know, I have a great job. I get to travel not only across Canada, but uh, yeah, Bridget Matisse and my uh, special advisor is located in Washington, and uh, uh, she's going to be here today to give you the view of what's going on in the United States, uh, and, and particularly around the Canada-U.S. border. So I get to travel a lot in, uh, in the United States and, and a bit uh, around the world. But I can tell you one thing. Um, you know, every, every business, every community, every industry sector sees itself as a bit unique. You know, you ask a business, well, what are your issues? And all too often you hear, well, we have really unique issues. You know, it's, uh, I, I don't think anybody else has these issues. Uh, I'm sure you've heard that here at communities and maybe communities within the region. Well, you know, the, the issues are in... Uh, in uh, it may not be the same issues in Oshawa. Well, the second thing that I learn as I travel around is that 
Canadians are all unique in extremely similar ways. The issues are not that different from community to community, and especially now as we're beginning to recover from this deep recession, I think a lot of the issues are exact are pretty much the same, and I'm going to go through some of those issues today. But the other thing that I'm convinced of is that everybody is looking for a local solution to those issues. And again, that's why what you're here today to discuss is so important, because it's communities that are able to work together, move forward together, who are able to communicate their assets and, and work on their strengths, that are going to be the most effective here in leveraging that economic opportunity. And I think that's extremely important. A few of the speakers before have talked about the importance of retaining business as well as attracting business uh, to the region. And that's also extremely very important. You know, any, anybody who is in marketing or in sales can tell you it's always easier to keep your customer than it is to attract new ones. And if you do a good job at keeping your customers and retaining your businesses, I guarantee the word gets around, and that's number one priority in terms of making decisions about investment. And we can talk about tax rates, those are important. We can talk about the quality of the labor force, that's important as well. Location, logistics, all of that's important. But the number one decision, or the number one factor driving investment location is, is this community the right place for me and my employees? And so a community that has its act together, a community that sees the importance of retaining their own business space and provides a good, sound investment location is far ahead in, in also attracting business today. So with that, let me, uh, I've spent a lot of time just talking here and, and I have about 90 slides that I have to go through in about uh, two and a half, four minutes. So like any strategy, let's talk, let's start first of all with uh, with an uh, environmental scan, just a simple SWOT analysis. And I have to say I, uh, I took a lot of this from the work that's already been done uh, here in, in Durham. So let's start with strengths, weaknesses, and then I can talk a little bit about threats and opportunities here. This is the type of environmental scan that should be going into any strategic plan. But a strategic plan at the same time can remain on the shelf as a plan. I've seen too many strategies uh, in, in too many businesses do exactly that. And it, the key is how do you move from that plan to actual implementation. And that requires a concerted action plan, benchmarks, timelines, responsibilities. And it also requires money. Because I've also all too, you know, seen all too much come up with a great idea, great idea, a great strategy, a great vision. But I can tell you, vision without money is just hallucination. But the, that implementation plan and the money behind it is extremely important. So let's start with some of the strengths. And this, a great deal of the regional strengths here is, uh, this is, is your view of the regional strengths of, uh, of Durham, and I think we've already touched on many of them. Skilled labor force. That's not too good. That's a lot easier. A skilled labor force. Uh, the logistics in terms of air, of, uh, of the port facility, strong agricultural base, strong auto manufacturing and other manufacturing uh, base here. Uh, state of the art, uh, uh, advanced manufacturing base. World-class medical facility, the educational research institutions, the nuclear power that's located here, and the quality of life of, uh, of the region. We have strengths at the provincial level too, and I'm not talking necessarily about provincial governments, uh, but just province-wide. Uh, our location, proximity, if you can actually get around the GTA, our location, uh, proximity to customers, suppliers, the world-class innovation infrastructure that is here in Ontario which we usually don't recognize as such. But I can tell you there's, there are a few places in the world where you have this concentration of manufacturing, real world-class manufacturing uh, capabilities, of research, of education, of a skilled workforce, location, and logistics. There are very, very few places in the world that bring that all together. There may be only two other places in North America along the 
I-75 and I-95 corridors of the United States that can bring that combination of assets uh, together. And very strong federal and provincial support for innovation, next generation technologies and for companies that are trying to transition themselves into these into these new technologies. And I think you'll you'll hear later on about <clears throat> some of the initiatives both at the federal level and the uh, and the provincial level. Nationally, competitively low business tax rates. The idea is to reduce the combined federal provincial tax rate to 25% uh, in 2012. I think that's a very important thing to do, to follow through with that commitment, because a lot of companies are making investment decisions based on the expectation that that's where tax rates are going to be. Comparatively low levels of government debt and, and a comparatively strong financial sector, although I don't think we should take that necessarily too far because there's some risks here uh, that, are, that still remain on the financial side. But let's be very clear here too that there are some weaknesses. At the regional level we're talking about the road system. The fact that job creation is keeping pace with demographic growth uh, in the region. The loss of the industrial base. Here we'll talk about that in a, in a second. Provincially, uh, the regulatory system is a real detriment to investment, and it's a real detriment to retaining investment, particularly on those on the part of those companies that are facing now new regulations that this is that are often impractical to achieve, that are costly to comply with. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying we shouldn't be regulating business. We need to regulate business. Every business faces regulation. That's how markets are defined. And we need to be able to protect the environment and health and safety. But we can do that in an effective way. And it, it seems to me if we can make that simple and less costly to comply with, we get better compliance. That's the economist to be speaking. But if it's easy to comply, companies will do it more easily than a system that is complex, that takes a lot of time to comply with. This is the sector that brings 85% of new products to market. This is the sector that creates the anchor for all the value-adding activities around manufacturing, which is what I've just said here. And you can, uh, I'm going to skip through these, uh, these uh, slides very quickly, so, uh, but I know that they'll be available. It's very important, and really, it's important because every dollar about put in manufacturing creates job, creates about two dollars and twenty-five cents in activity around manufacturing, and much of that is in the in the services sector, in technology, in telecommunications, engineering, design, logistics, materials handling, finance, business management, in all of the other personal services that are all driven by the fact that employees are out there spending. Government services, because 30% of the business taxes in the communities are paid by the manufacturing sector. That's what drives an economy. And we have to think of manufacturing as the anchor of growth. Not necessarily as the sector that is going to be creating all of the jobs, but the sector that anchors all of the high value jobs around it. This is what's happened to manufacturing. 30% loss of orders. We're about, we're climbing up, we're halfway up that hill in terms of the recovery. In fact, this year, manufacturing will outpace the Canadian economy by a factor of 4 to 1. Here, we will see 12% growth, I guarantee it, in manufacturing this year. Double digit growth. Uh, and not too bad on the part of the sector that everybody thinks has disappeared. And a lot of that is driven by automotive. A lot of it it was caused by the downturn in the U.S. market. So we depend on that, that recovery in the U.S., which is going to be a long way off, to drive the recovery of Canadian manufacturing as well.